Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Triple C. The setting's a little bit different tonight because we're getting spooky. And this is going to involve skeletons in a real deep way. I read Spinal Catastrophism by Thomas Moynihan. The premise of this book uh, is right there in the title, Spinal Catastrophism. Kind of a difficult thing to explain. I'll try to get into it as quickly as possible, but there is a lot to go through. I'm going to try to keep it as brief as I can. Basically what Thomas Moynihan is doing in this book is he's putting together um, a kind of grand unified theory about um, the uh, genesis of consciousness at large and how it ties into biology and cosmology. Biology is kind of the middle, um, the middle of the whole uh, freak sandwich of this whole thing. So I'm going to start there when I actually get into what the book is about. But um, generally the argument that the author presents here uh, is pulled from a whole bunch of uh, other authors. A lot of them that I had never heard of. I'm not going to remember all their names. Um, sadly, there was one in particular whose name I forgot. Um, dude uh, lost his mind after uh, researching signals for SETI. His story in particular is pretty cool. Um, and whether or not uh, Thomas Moynihan's um, grand unified theory here actually holds up based on um, what he's pulled from all these other writers I'm not really going to be able to say because I'm not super familiar with the writings of all these guys because let's be real all like academic philosophy is for pussy ass bitches <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't mean that I mean I didn't say that who's here with me who's in here now it's getting real spooky um but you got the cast of Usual Suspects and then a couple of others. You got, um, you got Schopenhauer, you got Freud, you got Jung, you got, um, oh, who else is in there? J.G. Ballard, Wilhelm Reich, uh, all of those guys that were straddling the line between science, mysticism, philosophy, and um, fiction. Uh, but uh, all have the same uh, underlying um, tendency towards pretty... Uh, pretty amazing, uh, what would we say, a range of speculation, and uh, Thomas Moynihan takes that and goes real far with it. So, what he's saying generally in this theory is that consciousness, and I got to get a little bit uh, pedantically specific here when we're talking about consciousness. This isn't just awareness of environment and, um, and the response to it, but this is the uniquely human kind of consciousness that allows us um, language and creativity. And we're not going to get lost in the weeds about, uh, oh, dolphins have language, you know. What about, what about apes? Apes stand upright, blah, blah, blah. No, look, dolphins don't write. Your parrot doesn't understand you. And Coco was a sham. <laughs> This is a, a position, uh, status that humans um, occupy uniquely. And Moynihan goes into, um, goes, puts in the effort to delineate this sort of um, recursive self-awareness from nature and the, the laws that govern the natural organization of information and energy and material or matter, I guess. It's something that he pulls from Burroughs, or rather he cites Burroughs when he's talking about this, Burroughs' notion that, that language is a parasite. And Moynihan goes even further and says that the, the intellect, the will and the intellect is um, parasitic as well and it has basically hijacked biology. Now he doesn't go into um, much more than a little bit of, oh, hey, what about this idea and what about this idea about how that really happened? Is the intellect uh, or the that recursive self-awareness, that will, something that came from um, outside of nature? Is it alien? Is it something that was here from the beginning? That's kind of beside the point. Well, it is interesting to think about. Rather, his uh, the basic, I'd say, 
probably foundational evidence for this whole theory is also where it got its name, spinal catastrophism. It's in the spine itself. It's in the erect posture of Homo sapiens. It's something that you don't see, and he goes into a lot of detail and evidence um, uh, to, to speak of how that orthograde posture that Homo sapiens possesses is something that you'd expect, given everything else, ought not to have evolved naturally. This is mostly because of the health problems that humans have that are just absent in um, what you see with uh, other, other mammals with the um, endoskeleton, other uh, what, are, what he would call pronograde um, animals. He goes into detail about the shape of the skull, the size of the brain, the way that our eyes are oriented on the same vertical plane as the mouth rather than the mouth being extended forward in a snout, which is what animals have because they need that snout to poke around and manipulate things. We have the hands. They are all forward. Our sensory organs are um, designed to perceive at a distance. There's a lot about that in there. I'm not going to get super deep into it. I'm not spoiling anything yet. Here comes the spoilers if you want them. So why all this? Well, basically what he gets into near the end is that the the purpose of the purpose of the intellect is to huh, it's about suicide. And we're not talking about regular old killing yourself suicide. That's that's weak. And we're not even talking about killing other people. We're not even talking about the eradication of the human race. We're not even talking about the eradication of sentient life, man. We're not even talking about the eradication of life, period. We're talking about eradication of reality. Making sure that nothing ever exists again. Because that's the only way that we can be sure consciousness will never arise. It's the only way that we can weed out this parasite. He's saying that the intellect is essentially a perfectly engineered virus with the purpose of destroying everything because the universe is a wound. It's an, it's an engram in the mind of God. Now, he doesn't say that. Those are my words. But it's, it's the best way that I can shorten things uh, using language that is general, granted, but um, the best way that I can, that I know how to make it understood clearly. Spinal catastrophism, a lot more in there than just stuff about the spine. That is where it starts off because, like I said, that is kind of the, the thing that got a lot of people going and, and it's, the, it's the kind of foundational evidence that all these writers that, um, that Moynihan draws together uh, for, his, um, for his hyperthesis, what they speak of. So, good book. It's spooky, that's for sure. Got me thinking. I would say if you're the type that wants things very serious and, uh, and you're looking for, looking for books on things that are applicable or <clears throat> utilitarian, then avoid. But I would also say, why so serious? Because it is a fun book. It's a wild ride. I'm going to avoid the obvious um, reference there. But insofar as uh, treating it like a very, very cool premise for some truly, truly far-reaching um, speculative ideas about the cosmogenesis, beginning and end of time, purpose of everything, uh, as well as that very, very fun old question why are we here? How did we get here? Those types of things. He goes into it hard, man. Sometimes too hard. Kind of rough, kind of a rough read. Not to say anything bad about the writing. It's very concise and impassioned. Um, it's, it's neither, neither dry or, um, or dramatic. So if any of that sounds appealing at all, Spinal Catastrophism, A Secret History by Thomas Moynihan.